wamekuwa kifululiza pamoja nasi mada yetu inatoka katika kitabu cha Mosi mlango ni watisa na our, our main our overall theme imekuwa ni restoration uh, maana ya maneno hayo ya kwamba the plowmen will overtake the reapers inamaanisha restoration restoration wa Kiswahili nini na sioni biblia Kiswahili hapo restoration wa Kiswahili ni urejesho so mada yetu kuu inahusiana na urejesho na kwa hivyo na atujapata nafasi mzuri wa kupitia kitabu cha Amosi mara nyingi inakuwa ni vyema wakati tunazungumzia mada fulani kutoka kwa kitabu fulani ni vyema kupitia kitabu hi, hi, kupitia kitabu um, ngeli hapa na nchezea sasa sijui kama ni kitabu hiyo kitabu hicho <laughs> Reverend sisi watu wa Nyanza tunalemewa sana na ngeli <laughs> lakini mnaelewa si ni kweli Asante kwa hivyo tutapitia kitabu cha Amosi kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 9 kwa hivyo uh, my my theme for this period of time tutakuwa nafanya bible study we want to do an exposition of the book of Amos kwa kizungu tunataka tufanye uchambuzi wa kitabu hiki eh, ya Amosi bwana Yesu asifiwe na ndiposa tukaweze kufanya exposition leo ningependa tu tukaweze kuanza kwa kuelewa jinsi ya kutafsiri unabii ningependa tuangalie kwa sababu hiki ni kitabu cha unabii this is a prophetic book kitabu cha Amos ni kita, kitabu cha unabii ah tuko na vitabu nyingi ama vingi va, uh, vitabu vya unabii na hii ni moja wapo Amosi na kwa hivyo ningependa tu tukaweze tutaweza kufocus kidogo tu kwa kuangalia ni jinsi gani tunaweza kuele, kusoma na kuelewa na hata kutafsiri kitabu cha unabii kwa hivyo kwa kizungu tunasema today I'll be focusing on handling and interpreting prophetic books in general alafu ndiposa baadaye tutakuja kwa exposition of the book of Amos kwa hivyo katika ku handle na ku interpret prophetic books tunaweza tumia kama siku mbili ndiposa tukaweze kuelewa kwa hivyo hii Wednesday na next Wednesday tutaweza ku focus on this area so that we will not uh, be misled we will not misinterpret the bible bwana Yesu asifiwe bwana Yesu asifiwe amen kwa wale ambao sababu ni bible study Bible study ni vyema tuelewe ya kwamba Biblia imegawanyika katika mfumo tofauti ya uandishi. Na ni vyema tuelewe si kila si kila scripture ina maana obvious. Lakini haimaanishi ya kwamba pia Biblia ni ngumu kuelewa hapana. Vile tu lazima tujue kama moja imeandikwa na, na na story narrative tujue jinsi ya kuinterpret scripture za narrative tujue jinsi ya kuinterpret scriptures za poetry tujue jinsi ya kuinterpret scriptures za, za, za prophetic kwa hivyo biblia imegawanyika katika mfumo mingi tuko na narrative we have narratives hizi ni kama story katika biblia utapata kuanzia genesis mpaka um, genesis exodus uh, leviticus numbers deuteronomy hizo pentateuch vitabu hizo tano ni narratives Musa anatoa habari hadithi ya jinsi ambavyo ulimwengu ulianza na mambo kadhaa. Ukiangalia kitabu cha kidogo kitabu cha Ayubu, kitabu cha Zaburi na Mithali, Songs of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, hizo vitabu zinaongelea poetic literature. Kwa hivyo tuko na narrative na kuna jinsi ambavyo unafaa kutafsiri narrative. Kwa wale ambao wamekuwa wakifuata wakitembea pamoja nasi in the main service niliongea kuhusu narratives kadhaa na nikasema siri moja ya kuinterpret narrative ni hii ya kwamba for you to understand a narrative you need to follow the narrator iposa ukaweze kuelewa story lazima ufuate yule ambaye anatoa hiyo story la sivyo utapotea na tukasema narrative unaposoma ukue, ukue ni, ukue ni ma, makini sana umakinike sana kwa sababu Unaweza anza kusoma story ya verse 
na kumbe narrative story yenyewe imeanza si verse si chapter 10 story yenyewe imeanza chapter 3 sababu mtu ambaye anapiga hadithi anazanga mbali na watu wengi wana, wanaanza tu kutoa application kabla ya kuelewa huyu ambaye anapiga story ameanzia wapi kwa hivyo siri kuu ya kutafsiri story ama narrative ni wanze na yule ambaye anaanza na hiyo story Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na tuliweza kuangalia mfano wa The Tower of Babel. Tukaangalia kumbe hiyo story ya The Tower of Babel aianzi chapter 10 chapter 11 inaanzia chapter 3. Wale ambao walikuwa wanafuata kwa main service tuliangalia hayo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the name of the living God. Na sasa tuko kwa prophecy. Ni kwa prophecy na hata kabla tujaenda hapo katika Bible interpretation wacha ni mention hii. Si tunaandika tafadhali na kili hii very important. Katika Bible interpretation leo, leo ni kama tuko Bible school. <laughs> Katika Bible interpretation tuko na sehemu tatu ambayo lazima uzingatie ukitaka kupata ku interpret kwa usawa ama accurately. Kiswahili leo nanipiga chenga eh. Number one, uko na three steps. Number one, observation. Unaposoma andiko lazima uanze na kusoma na kuelewa ah ni nani ana, anaandika alikuwa anaandikia kina nani alikuwa anaandika wakati mgani alikuwa anaandika nini ilikuwa inafanyika ikamsababisha aandike kwa hivyo you must start by observing na hiyo ndio tunaita mahali ya mahala ya tunaita wa kizungu ni looking at the context ama placing the context every story must be placed within its context kila kitu lazima uweke within its context miles monroe the late the late miles monroe alisema hivi alisema ya kwamba a text read without its post text its pretext and its post text na maanisha a text andiko ambayo imesomwa bila text yake hapo juu hapo awali na text yake ambayo inafuatia a text read without its pretext and its post text is read out of context ukisoma tu andiko na uzingatie yale ambayo yametajwa hapo awali na yale ambayo yametajwa hapo baadaye utaisoma out of context bwana yesu asifiwe haleluya na ukitaka kujua hiyo angalia wanasiasa wanasiasa wanakuambia hai wewe oh, ulisikia vibaya si kusema hivyo a very good example <laughs> ya context jika mnakumbuka ndolo ndolo wanasiasa wale wale wazee wanakumbuka jana wakumbuki ndolo walikuwa me, na wakati alikuwa amechacha hapo makadara akasema ukileta weka ta ah alisema alisema ukileta fujo ukileta fujo mara ya kwanza alisema ukileta fujo itaweka taya na watu wakasema eh hey, weka taya weka taya akashikwa aka, aka kaulizwa wewe una, una insight watu into violence sema hapana hamkusikia vizuri nilisema weka taya gari ipite si weka taya watu wachomeke <laughs> but we know the context ya kuweka taya <laughs> kama wewe ni mkenya unajua america wakisikia mambo ya weka taya watashangaa what are they talking about sababu huko watu wachukui sheria kwa mikono yao hakuna kuchomwa na taya so mtu akisoma akisikia hii politics ya Kenya na kwa America ni mzungu atashangaa what what are they talking about sababu context ya hiyo hadithi ni hivi ukiweka taya hapa Kenya inamaanisha mtu anafanya nini nachomwa bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo kama hutaelewa hiyo context unaweza fikiria eh yenyewe ni kuweka taya gari ipite na kumbe ni mtu kuchomeka bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo tunasema unaanza na observation. Baada ya observation unakuja kwa interpretation. Usianze tu kutafsiri andiko kama haujaelewa context. Na kuelewa context unasaidiwa na vitabu vingine. Utasaidiwa na commentary. Utasaidiwa na Bible dictionary. Utasaidiwa na Bible atlas. Utasaidiwa na a good study Bible. Hizo ndo vitu zinakusaidia kuelewa context. 
na baada ya kuelewa context ndio sasa unakuja kwa interpretation maneno haya baada ya kuzingatia na kuobserve mambo haya yote yanamaanisha nini yalimaanisha nini kwa wale walisikia mara ya kwanza what did they mean to the first hearers of this word alafu baada ya kujua yalimaanisha nini kwa wale walisikia mara ya kwanza ndio unakuja step ya tatu tunaita application after you've observed after you've realized or found the context the step ya pili inakuwa interpretation yali hii maneno haya yanamaanisha nini yalimaanisha nini kwa wale walisikia mara ya kwanza alafu baada hapo ndo unakuja unasema ah kwa hivyo mimi naweza jifunza na maneno haya na ndiposa tunaita the third step application so katika interpretation na katika kuinterpret kitabu hiki cha Amosi tutatumia hizo steps tatu we shall make observations then we shall interpret and there after we shall apply watu wengi wakisoma andiko wanaruka kwa application wana skip observation na interpretation and iposa wana read out of context bwana yesu asifiwe haleluya tuko pamoja kwa hivyo katika kuchambua kitabu hiki tutafanya mambo haya kwa hivyo prophetic books Paul anaandika andika ya kwamba tuko na two types of prophetic books we have the major prophets and we have the minor prophets katika kitabu katika prophecy na tunajua three quarter of the bible is prophecy ina contain what we call prophecy prophetic books kwa hivyo tuko na major prophets na minor prophets tuko na four major prophets wako wanne tukiangia mambo ya major prophets tunaongea kuhusu Isaiah Jeremiah Ezekiel and Daniel hao ni wanne major prophets Isaiah Jeremiah Ezekiel na Daniel those are the four major prophets alafu tuko na 12 minor prophets na nataka tu nijibu ni swali yako kwa sababu najua tu na, 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 na kama nikiangalia naona ni kama nauliza sasa tofauti ya major na minor ni nini we are going there tuko na 12 minor prophets uh, the rest akina Amos akina Micah akina Nahum Zechariah Zephaniah hao wote ukiwajumulisha pamoja wanakuwa karibu kumi na wawili hao ni minor prophets kwa hivyo swali ambayo tungependa kujibu ni Mbona hawa wanaitwa minor prophets na wale wanne wanaitwa major prophets na jibu ni rahisi sana ni kwa sababu ya the length of the books It is the length of the books unapata all these minor prophets vitabu vyao havikuwa refu sana lakini major prophets vitabu vyao vilikuwa ni refu maneno yao hayakuwa mengi Alafu wadadisi wa Biblia wanasema basi ina maanisha hawakutumika kwa muda mrefu because if if you are sharing if you are looking at a prophetic book na uangalie ujumbe kama ujumbe ni mfupi ina maanisha huyu jamaa alitumika kwa muda mfupi kama ujumbe ni mrefu ina maanisha huyu jamaa alitumika kwa muda mrefu na kwa hivyo tunasema kwamba the reason why they are called minor is because they are books were relatively shorter compared to the books of the major prophets bwana yesu asifiwe haleluya kwa hivyo haimaanishi ya kwamba hawa major prophets walikuwa na ujumbe bora the major prophets didn't have a superior message watu wengi wanafikiria wacha nisome the major prophets kwa sababu hao ndo walikuwa na ujumbe kali na kubwa na ya maana kwa hivyo si 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 umaana ambao inawagawanyisha ama inawatofautisha ni ufupi na urefu. Paka hapo tumeelewana. Kwa hivyo a minor prophet kama kitabu hiki cha Amosi is still has a powerful message like a major prophet in the book of Daniel or Isaiah or Jeremiah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na wacha nikupatie example andika hizi my examples mbili na kupatia examples mbili ya minor prophets ambao walikuwa na ujumbe ambao ni kama uti wa mgongo wa Ukristo 
The first example, angalia Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, Biblia inasema, the just shall live by faith. Paulo, and I quote in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, na Galatians chapter 3 verse 11, anaungia kusu a very important principle of Christianity. Ya kwamba, the just hand, you imeandikuwa, behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith, by his faith. Ya kwamba, ukristo wetu, kumewekwa juu ya muamba ya imani. We are saved, we are counted to be righteous by faith. Na hiyo ni a major message. Lakini imefichwa ndani ya a minor prophet. It's a minor prophet ameandika kitabu maneno haya, lakini it's a major message. Paulo anaiguzia in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, uh, tena anaiguzia katika wagalatia mlangu wa tatu na mstari wa kumi na moja ya kwamba the just shall live by faith. Another example is in Hosea chapter 1. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Na, na jaribu kupatia mfano wa minor prophets wameandika habari ama ujumbe ambao ni mkubwa katika Kristo. Angalia Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Pao imetajwa pia katika warumi mlango wa tisa na ishiri na sita. Paulo anautumia tena. Maneno haya katika Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Eh, nilikuwa ataka ni chukue iyo pati meanza na in the place. Lakini wacha tuwanze from Jew. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And it shall come to pass in the place, kia hapo, in the place where it will say to them, you are not my people, there it shall be said to them, you are sons of the living God. Wana isu asifiwe. Na inaungia kuhusu urejesho wa Israeli. Na mandiko hayo hayo ndo paulo anatumia katika warumi tisa mstari wa ishini na sita. Na mandiko hayo hayo ndo yanatajwa na Yesu. Anasema ya kwamba nyinyi ni wana wa mungu. Wana Yesu asifiwe. You are sons of the living God. Kwa hivyo we can see the genesis of this major message inafichua wapi kwa minor prophets. Kwa hivyo haimanishi ya kwamba uyu minor prophet ana ujumbe mzito wapana ni ya kwamba mungu alimtumia either kwa muda mfupi ama andiko hilo liko na liko very brief ufupi wake. Kwa hivyo leo nikependa pia tuangalie, tumeangalia the, the divisions of the prophetic books. Uh, sehemu ya pili nikependa uandike kama unandika a subtopic and the meaning of prophecy. Meaning of prophecy. Mara nyingi tunakuwa na shida sana maali hapa. Watu wakita, wakitaka kutafuta maana ya vitabu hivi vya unabi. Watu wanataka kusoma unabi lakini wataku, wataku kukimbia sana kuelewa maana yake. Ngependa tuelewe ya kwamba uh, jambo la kwanza ambayo inafanya watu wakwe na ugumu wa kuinterpret a prophecy ni kwa sababu ya hiyo jina prophecy how we define it hiyo jina prophecy kwa dictionary when i define hivi foretelling or predicting what is to come na hapo ndo pale kuna shida sababu watu wanaangalia prophecy kwa sehemu moja peke yake wanaangalia unabii ya kwamba ni kitu ambacho unate, una una foretell foretell ni Bashiri, utabiri. Aha. Ni ya kwamba watu wanaangalia tu, prophecy imeandiko kwa sababu ya kutabiri mambo ambayo yatakuja. And that is a problem. Sabu, prophecy iko na area mbili. Kuna hiyo ya kufotel, kutabiri, mahali kitu ambacho kitafanyika siku za usoni, lakini pia kuna sehemu ya pili ambayo ni kufotel. We have four telling and forth telling tofauti ni gani for telling ni kutabiri mambo ambayo atakuja siku za usoni forth telling ni kusema jambo kwa imani na inafanyika hiyo pia ni unabii kabla sijaiona Mungu ajaniambia itafanyika lakini ninatabiri 
Saa zingine pengine mtu a, 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 ni roho mtakatifu ama saa zingine mtu amebarikiwa. Umetembea ume, ume kidogo ukaona pasta Mike kidogo ukamwambia eh hey, pasta kamata hako ka, ka tano. enda ukunywe chai. <laughs> Alafu kwa sababu ya kusisimuka na kufurahi pasta Mike anasema na wewe Mungu akuinue wache current mwaka next year time like this nataka kuona umepata nyumba yako kwa sababu ya kumbariki na kamia tano aka fourth tell si ati Mungu amemwambia <laughs> atasema Mungu ameniambia anasema tu kwa imani kile ambacho kitatendeka and guess what sometimes inafanyika kwa hivyo katika unabii kuna kufortell na ku, na kufort tell na hapa katika unabii pia ningependa ugundue mara nyingi unabii ayongei sana kuhusiana na mambo ya siku za usoni mara nyingi inaongea sana kuhusiana na mambo ya sasa umesema biblia iliandikwa kwa the first hearers walisikia mara ya kwanza na wakati wale manabii walikuwa wanatoa prophecy hao walikuwa wanatoa prophecy ya kuwahusu hao sasa hiyo si kuhusu mambo ya siku za usoni ni kuhusu maisha yao sasa hiyo na sisi tukisoma unabii watu wengi wanasema ah pengine hiyo ni kitu takuja ama unabii zote tunasema unabii inaongelea mambo ya Yesu kukuja tunalamp up all the prophecy kuongea kuhusu siku za usoni so mtu akisikia mambo ya prophecy wanasema ai tunaenda kuongea kuhusu rapture <laughs> wanafikiria kila prophetic book inaongea kuhusu rapture kila prophetic book inaongea kuhusu Yesu kukuja. Iko na a few statistics ningependa nikupatie hapa. Angalia statistics hivi kama kama nne hivi ama tatu. Number one, je ulijua did you know that less than 2% of the Old Testament prophecy is messianic. Less than 2%. Na kwamba prophecy, prophetic books ambazo zimeandikwa ni asilimia chini ya asilimia mbili ndo inaguzia mambo ya mesia. Si zote zinaongea kuhusu mambo ya mesia. Chini ya asilimia mbili, 2%. Did you know another statistics that less than 5% describes the new covenant age. Yaani chini ya asilimia tano inaongea kuhusu the new covenant. Siku za usoni, siku za rapture na beyond, only 5%, less than 5% of the prophetic books zinaongea kuhusu mambo ya usoni did you know that less than 1% concerns events yet to come in our time kwa hivyo ndiposa ukaweze kuelewa inamaanisha asilimia kubwa ya prophecy inaongea kuhusu mambo kwao pengine haiko haiko metimika lakini iko karibu sana kutimia na kwetu ni mambo tayari yametimia Maswala mengi Isaiah alitaja yalitimia. Maswala mengi Yeremia alitaja yalishatimia. Kwa hivyo kwao ilikuwa ni siku za usoni kwetu ni past. Kwao ni future kwetu ni past. Kwa hivyo tukisoma unabii inatusaidia kuelewa ya kwamba what we should be looking for is what did they mean so that we can apply it in our days sababu almost 80% of the prophetic writings have been fulfilled karibu 80% zimekamilika walitabiri Yesu atakuja alikuja almost 80% of the prophetic literature has been fulfilled kwa hivyo tunaposoma atusomi ni kana kwamba ni kitu haituhusu ni kitu haikufanyika ni kitu inahusu nyakati zile hapana tunasoma tukielewa ya kwamba one of the keys to understanding the prophetic books is that for us to see their prophecies were fulfilled. Ni vyema kuelewa ya kwamba unabii hiyo ilitimia timika. Na wewe utambue na mimi nitambue ya kwamba Mungu akinena anatenda. Our God is not a liar. Whatever he says he fulfills na chochote ametabiri hapa na chochote ametaja hapa kuhusiana na wewe utakapokuielewa itatimia 
kitatimika maishani mwako. Semeni amen. Andiposa basi tunajifunza kutoka hapo na hiyo itakusaidia katika interpretation so that uangalie si kila kitu ina, inaongea kuhusu mambo ya kukuja mengi yanaongea kuhusu mambo ambayo tayari ameshafanyika kwa hivyo ni up to wewe it's up to you and I to decide what did it mean so that I can apply it in my life hallelujah 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 na kwa hivyo tumesema iposa tukaweze kuelewa wacha tunirudie nimeona kuna watu wameingia iposa tukaweze kuelewa maandiko ya unabii lazima tuelewe ya kwamba number one, our time and their time is far removed we are far removed from their time can you imagine statement iliandikwa over 2000 years ago huu unasoma saa hizi ni kama kizungu for example Zungu ina evolve na kuna ile wimbo tunaimbanga kwa Christmas um, la 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 na 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 mnajua tunasemanga don don thee now thy gay apparel la 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 wanatumia jina gay wanasema va your gay apparel sasa hii ilikuwa ni language ya english ya kitambo ya kati za um, wanaitwaje wale ule ule the great writer shakespeare ukiambiwa ya kwamba you are looking gay <laughs> yakati zile kwa wazungu wa hapo kitambo ulikuwa nasema unakaa nadhifu unakaa smart so nasema hey, mr mike put on the gay apparel put on the gay <laughs> dressing <laughs> Pasta Mike anaanza anapiga blow anaambia unaniita gay <laughs> saa hii lakini in those days iposa uweze kuelewa unafaa kujiuliza what did they mean a gay apparel ama gay clothing gay ilikuwa inamaanisha kitu mzuri beautiful dressing now karibu kuambia mtu you looking gay utasikia kaslaku kama ikuangukia hapa sababu sasa gay inamaanisha a homosexual and iposa unaposoma bandiko you need a bible dictionary so that because we, our times are far removed from their times 2000 years ngumu kusoma tu hivi tunasoma tu maandiko hivi alafu ielewe hivi ngumu unahitaji bible commentary bwana yesu asifiwe kanisa la dandora na waomba tafadhali ya kwamba ninajua nikisema kila mtu atoe simu yake hapa nitaona simu kuna juzi nilikuwa nimeenda kwa baraza ya pefa kuna mchungaji alikuwa na simu nilikashanga nika, ai huyu mchungaji mbona kuna simu ila kamba ya mbaya hivi lakini kumbe hiyo simu si mbaya hiyo simu ni kama 2 in 1 anafanya hivi anakuwa na simu mbili aitoa hivi inakuwa ni simu mbili yani simu ni expensive nilisikia ndugu yangu fulani alinunua simu 115000 nikamwambia hiyo ungepatia e, mzee chege angetafuta kama ugonda <laughs> ka 200000 <laughs> angangane na 75 ama 80000 lakini ananua simu ya 100 and sijui 15000 so nikauliza mtoe simu zenu hivi najua mtanitolea masimu na najua kweli tumebarikiwa especially if you're next to a brother from Nyanza I ah, just have you know I'm one of them so I have this one hii ni araia lakini hii ni ashiro. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. <laughs> Niko na mbili. <laughs> I have one for official businesses and one that is for private use only. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So I'm sure nikiwaambia mnyonyeshe simu, mtanyonyesha simu za aina mingi mingi na ni ya baraka. Lakini nikiwaambia hebu inua Biblia yako. Ndio nitashangaa. Sababu mtu anatumia bado kale ka Gideon, kale ka New Testament. Hiyo ndio Biblia yake hata ile ume, ume download kwa bible kwa kwa simu ni ka bible kafani fani kanisa la dandora acha tu invest kwa biblia a good study bible physical one good study bible it will cost between 3000 up to 11000 invest in one lakini kama uwezi invest in a good study bible basi angalau download commentary bible commentary na nimeambia watu wa kanisa Na wacha niendelee kuwaimbia tena 
ya kwamba tuko na Adam's clock. Bible commentary iko hapa. Matthew Henry's. Download, ni free. Enda tu kwa Google app, download. Na wewe spend time yako badala kukaa kwa Facebook kila saa. Mtu akipost hata 1 minute jaisha umesha like. Yaani tu uko hapo unangoja eh, a post ngali zinaingia, una like tu, una like tu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Acha tununue, acha tu download my Bible commentary. Eh, almasi amecheka sana. Almasi are you guilty? <laughs> by Pastor Sam. Amen. <laughs> Watch to download. And they are free. Bible commentaries. Very free. Bible dictionary. Free. Kwa hivyo, ukitaka kuelewa the meaning of prophecy, basi lazima ukue na hizi vitabu. Bible Atlas. Ita kwa niya baraka. Leo wacha tumalize kwa daka kumi ambazo zimesalia. We may keep time vizuri. We want to be done by exactly 7.30. Andika tu kwa kifupi sana. The functions of ama the function singular the function of prophecy in Israel the function of prophecy in Israel bona mungu alitumia sana the stylistic device of prophecy akiongelea wana wa Israeli alafu next week tutangalia forms of prophetic utterance next week lakini sasa ni kona four functions four ndio jirani yako four Four functions of prophecy bona Mungu alikuwa anatumia unabii. Number one, ni vyema kuelewa katika unabii kuna nabii, si ndio? Na sababu kuu Mungu anatumia nabii ilikuwa number one, the prophets were covenant enforcement mediators. Acha nirudie kwa kizungu ndio uandike. The prophets, yani manabii, they were covenant enforcement mediators manabii walikuwa ni watu ambao wanahakikisha ya kwamba eh, agreement covenant eh, covenant ni maagano ya Mungu na watu wake yamefuatiliwa so kazi ya nabii ilikuwa ni rahisi go and enforce the covenant that i've made with my mediator in other words Ukitaka kuelewa prophecy lazima ujue hivi every prophecy is related to a covenant ya kwamba Mungu ameingia katika maagano na wanadamu na haswa ameingia katika maagano na wa, wana wa Israeli na anakuja anatuma nabii aende akawambie ya kwamba Mungu anasema ninakuja kuhakikisha ya kwamba magano hayo yametendeka wale wamekuwa waminifu watabarikiwa na wale hawajakuwa waminifu watalaaniwa kulingana na maagano kwa hivyo kazi ya nabii ni rahisi ni kuambia watu simuliagana eh na Mungu anasema hivi kwa sababu mumekiuka maagano basi vitu viwili vitatandika vitu, uh, yani sababu kulingana na magano hayo vitu viwili lazima zitendeke kama uta utakuwa mwaminifu kwa agano hilo utabarikiwa na kama utakiuka utalaaniwa Bwana Yesu asifiwe haleluya na ni vyema kuelewa ya kwamba all prophecies all prophecies ziko based on that just that covenant with when you miss that you've missed it so kila prophet kila prophet ataongea kuhusu either the blessings na nawapatia maandiko kidogo hapa kuna ukitaka kuangalia zile prophecies ziko related na the blessings that come to the faithful ones kwa sababu tayari baraka za maagano zilikuwa zimeandikwa na Musa angalia kitabu cha Walawi Leviticus chapter 26 verse 14 to 38 kuna baraka zimetajwa hapo kwa wale ambao watakuwa waminifu kufuatilia maagano Leviticus chapter 26 verse 14:38 Lafu tena baadaye kuna zile pia zimetajwa katika Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 32 to 40 Hizi ni blessings ambazo zinakujia wale ambao ni waminifu kufuatilia maagano Leviticus 26:14 to 38 Deuteronomy 4 verse 32 to 40 Angalia tena Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 14 hizi zinaongelea baraka 
ambazo zitakuja kwa wale ambao wanatimiza wana maagano. Kutoka mwezi 28 verse 1 to 14. Haya, wacha tuangalie laana. Maandiko ya wale ambao walikuwa hawatimizi maagano na laana ambayo itawafuata yamenakiliwa pia katika Leviticus 26. Kuanzia tu bado 14 to 39 yamenakiliwa hapo. Leviticus 26 14 to 39 laana yamenakiliwa hapo. Uko na Deuteronomy. Kumbukumbu la Torati, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 15 to 28. Laana imetajwa kwa wale ambao hawatimizi maagano. Alafu ya mwisho Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Kuendelea ana Na ningependa kuambia hii baraka inaongelea nini? Mara nyingi tu wacha tu summarize zile baraka wanataja manabii wanasema ukiangalia ukikata cross baraka ni kama sita. Kuna six categories. Na hizi six categories ni zile tutapata katika kitabu cha Amos. Tafadhali najaribu tu kwa prepare. Kwa tukiingia katika kitabu cha Amos hatutaenda verse by verse. Tutaenda concept by concept katika kitabu cha Amosi kuna baraka ambazo zimekuwa categorized into six. Katika kitabu cha Isaiah baraka ambazo wamezitaja ziko categorized into six blessings. Jeremiah the same, Joel the same, Hosea the same. Now the first category number one, ni life. Mungu anasema kwamba mkiti na mkifuatilia maagizo na magano yangu nitawabariki na nini? Long life. So life is one of the blessings. Itawabariki na life uhai. Number two, anasema itawabariki na health. Afya. Napotii maandiko na mnapotii agano, Mungu anataja baraka za afya. That is the second category of blessings in all the prophetic literature. Number three, ukitimiza agano, anaongea kuhusu prosperity Kwa hivyo watu wengi wanakataa mambo ya prosperity wanasema eh huyu pastor anaongea sana mambo ya prosperity Wacha nikwambie Biblia inazungumzia prosperity ambayo ni lazima kwa wale wote wanatimiza ahadi ya Bwana Prosperity is our portion Prosperity si gospel kuna wale wanadumu hapo sana mpaka wamefanya jina prosperity mchukiwe mpaka hata mchungaji aweze ongea kuhusu kufanikiwa sababu utasema ah hiyo ni kanisa ya prosperity plant a seed you will prosper ah, ah. for you to prosper in those days and even today ilikuwa tu ni uishi kwa na mapenzi ya Bwana you will prosper simple so utaji kuplant a seed au uhitaji kupanda mbegu au uhitaji kuona mchungaji au uhitaji kuombewa na kukesha hapana prosperity ni rahisi wewe fanya maagizo ya Bwana tii amri zake kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu you will prosper Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo prosperity ilikuwa hapo number four, the fourth category agricultural abundance cultural abundance tunaangalia categories of blessings ambazo zimekuwa listed katika maandiko agricultural abundance number five, respect respect number six, safety kwamba ukiangalia unabii wote baraka ambazo zimetajwa katika unabii wote vitabu vya unabii zote zinaguzia life health prosperity agricultural abundance respect and safety Alafu baadaye na je cases acha tuangalie category ya cases kwa wale ambao hawatii agano ya Mungu kwa hao wana wa Israeli zilikuwa categorized into 10 sections cases ni mingi kushinda blessings <laughs> ikumi na guess what zote zinaanza na d zinaanza na b kasi ya kwanza death zote zinaanza na D. They are categorized into 10. Na zote zinaanza na D. Category ya cases ni death, number 2 disease, number 3 drought. Hivyo nabii anakuja anasema akutanyesha. 
sababu kategori ya laana ya Mungu ilikuwa inaambatana na kifo, gonjwa na ukame. Drought. Number four, danger. Number five, destruction. Number six, defeat. Number seven, deportation. Kuchukuliwa kutoka kwa, kwa taifa lenyu, munapele kwa taifa lingine na kurudishwa. Hiyo ni kwa deportation. Number eight, destitution. Number nine, disgrace. Number ten, dirt. Dirt, watch and practice spelling. Spelling your dirt be D-E-A-R-T-H. D-E-A-R-T-H. You need dirt. See death? Dirt. Now dirt in a manisha scarcity or lack. So if you, the anazotes will be in those ten categories. Death, disease, drought, danger, destruction, defeat, deportation, destitution, disgrace, and death. Na nikikupatia examples, lakini example kubwa ni kama hii yetu. Amos chapter 9 verse 11 to 15. Categories hizo zimetajwa za baraka. Kwa wale ambao watatii amri ya mungu. Na category ya destruction utaipata katika Hosea chapter 8 verse 14. Sama you shall be destroyed. Deportation. Hosea chapter 9 verse 3. Tajua wana wa Israeli wali, walikuwa na three deportations. Three. Chini ya Ezra, chini ya Nehemiah, na chini ya nani tena? Chini ya Ezra, Nehemiah, nani mingine? Nani mingine? A guy. Wait for sifiu. Wanae sa sifiu. Leo tuko Bible study. Kwa hivyo tunaangalia, kulikuwa na three deportations. Kwa hivyo hata hapa unaangalia Hosea chapter 9 verse 3 anatabiri mambo ya deportations. Kwa hivyo tume, tumeangalia uh, katika function ya prophecy tumesema ya kwamba jambo la kwanza lazima ujue ya kwamba nabii anakuja kuhakikisha ya kwamba analeta laana ama baraka kulingana na maagano ya Mungu na watu wake. Number 2 that is the first function. Number 2 the second function tunamaliza hii inataja tu si explain Lazima ujue ya kwamba the prophet's message was not their own message, but God's. A prophet hakuwa naleta ujumbe wake, alikuwa naleta ujumbe wa mungu. Nandiposa hakuna nabi angejiita mkubwa, wacha na squeeze. Squeeze nasikia kuna watu najiita the greatest prophet. Hakuna nabi angejiita, I am a major prophet, the greatest prophet. Sabu ujumbe si wako. Ujumbe ni wa mungu, kutia wewe. So just a conduit. Na mara nyingi walikuwa na kangalia mfano ni Jeremiah 27, verse 1 to 3. Tabu ujumbe ni mkubwa na ni mgumu kwa Jeremiah kusema. Anasema, that says the Lord, that says the Lord, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. Hakuna manino yangu hapa, hata moja. Jeremiah 27, hiyo ni mfano. Ana, ana, verse 1 to 3. Anaungia, analeta ujumbe exact the way amepokea kwa kwa mungu. Kwa hivyo tunasema, the function is that they were not to prophesy their own message, but it was God. So, function ya prophecy ni ya kwamba mungu analeta ujumbe wake na alikuwa natumia manabi. Ya tatu, function ya tatu ya prophecy, ya kwamba the prophets were God's direct representatives. Manabi walikuwa ni wakilishi wa mungu. They were God's direct representatives and God's ambassadors. Do ukiona nabi, watu wengi walikuwa ni kama wameona, ni kama wameona mungu. Sabu huyu ni mtu wa mungu, chochote anafanya ni kitu, ni, ni kitu ambayo ni mungu ameidhimisha. Andiposa, mungu wakambia, Hosea, poa, poa. Na kasema, wewe, utalinganishwa na mimi. Na huyo kahaba, atalinganishwa na Israeli. 
Kwa hivyo chochote Hosea alifanya watu walikuwa wanaona Mungu na vivyo hivyo. Hosea na oa kahaba, kahaba anarudi katika ukahaba, Zea anakimbia. Ana, ananunua tena kahaba wake. <laughs> Kama anaenda kwa ukahaba, Hosea anamwendea. Na Mungu anaambia Israeli, nimeambia Hosea aoe kahaba na muone mambo haya ndiposa mujue ya kwamba I have loved you with an everlasting love. Nyinyi mumenie hepa na mnaenda katika ukahaba lakini ninawafuata. Kwa hivyo kazi ya nabii ilikuwa ni anawakilisha Mungu. Paulo baadaye anasema kwamba sisi we are the we are the we are not the written epistles we are the sema nasema we are kama we are the living epistles sisi ndo watu wanatusoma sisi barua ambayo inasomeka ni wewe na mimi mtu akituona anafaa kuona Kristo na ndiposa pale wanafunzi wa nyakati zile waliitwa wa Kristo lakini saa hizi ukiona mtu anajiita Mkristo mpaka <laughs> hiyo maana imepotea hata watu wa sikuzi ya uji mbona watu waitwa Christians sababu watu walikuwa waitwa Christians because they were Christ like. Haungejua huyu huyu si Kristo. Yaani kila kila kitu anafanya ni kama Kristo. Alikuwa ni mwakilishi. That is how it's supposed to be even today. We are supposed to represent God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ningependa ujiulize you as the prophet of today. Are you representing God? Paka mtu akikuangalia anasema akiuni haki Uyu ni kama mwana wa Mungu. Na wachache pengine hapa. Oh, wamekaa hapa mbele ni kama wana wa Mungu. <laughs> True or false? <laughs> I mean surely. What fault can you find with Reverend Zado? Where surely? And Pastor Mike. Wana wa Mungu hao. Unaweza fanya kama mzaha. If that is how it's supposed to be. But when people look at Noah, they should see Christ how i conduct myself how i lead my family how i lead myself how i conduct myself watu wakiniona waone yesu iposa nitaitwa mkristo the the prophets were god's direct representatives and the last one as i sit down ni ya mwisho kabisa ya mwisho ya mwisho tu ya ukweli ya mwisho ni hii ya kwamba The prophet's message is not original. Unashangaa eh? Eh, the prophet's message is not original. The functions of a prophet ni kwamba number one, they were the enforcers of God's covenant. Number two, they are not speaking their own message but God's. Number three, they are direct representatives of God. Kwa hivyo chochote wanafanya ni kama Mungu anafanya hivyo and that's why Mungu alikuwa anachagua wale manabii very humble Yule alikuwa ni aski maneno kama Jonah wengine ni all the other prophets <laughs> very humble and number four, their message was not original why because they were only quoting the mosaic covenant message ya prophecy is not a new thing it is an old thing sababu kazi yao ni ya ku represent Mungu na mwanadamu na walete mambo ya maagano ya Mungu kwa hivyo hawako wanatoa jambo jipya wanasema kumbuka Musa alivyosema katika maagano ya kwanza ya Israeli na baba Ibrahimu kumbuka maneno haya mume kiuka kwa hivyo their message was not an original message it was something that was known something that was hard That is a key for us to understand even prophecy today. Wale watu wanakuja na new prophecy, a new message. Washuku sana. Hakuna kitu kipya. Hakuna mapendezo na John Carson. Huyu mwalimu anasema if it is new it is not true. If it's true it's not new. Nakubaliana na wewe. Hakuna jambo jipya. You cannot come to us and tell us, "Hey, 
I have a new revelation. Mungu ameniongelesha leo express new revelation. Hii hakuna pastor ameshaihubiri. Hii hakuna mtu ashaifundisha. This one is new from the Lord. Mwambie you are a liar. <laughs> There's nothing new. The ultimate revelation of Jesus Christ of, of God was Jesus Christ. Kila kitu inaonekana kwa Yesu Kristo. There's nothing new. And that is one way to weigh prophecy. Na nimesikia manabii wetu wa Kenya anatutisha na unabii mpya haijasikika haijaonekana haijajulikana That is just one thing nasikia hata nachokea hapo nachoka hapo kwa hiyo unabii si ni mpya hiyo ni uongo mpya There's nothing There's nothing new A prophet does not carry his original message everything he says been said. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tenda next week tuangalie forms of prophetic utterance. Alafu ndo sasa tuingie kwa kitabu cha Amos. I want us when we go to the book of Amos tusipotee mahali. Sababu tutatumia mambo haya haya tafsiri kitabu cha Amos atuimalize anajua sifa na utukufu utamsikia Mungu. Lakini niko net pamoja tunapokaribisha uh, kasisi.